So I am building up uh, a series of lectures to go along with the introductory physics course, the calculus based physics course. I'm kind of um, mapping this to the textbook, um, the physics textbook, Halliday, Radzik, and Walker, ninth edition, but they're pretty much all the same. So I've already done chapter one, which is units, and there's really nothing there. And now I'm going to do chapter two. Uh, I'm going to do this in as basic of a level as possible, especially this first one because it's not super uh, interesting. And then if you want to do problems, we can do problems later and stuff like that. Uh, so let's just start off with a number line. I'm going to put this in the x-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, and so forth. And the first thing that we want to do if we want to describe motion, suppose I have a ball right there, uh, is the idea of position. So we're going to say position is x equals 2 meters. It's your x value. That's it. Position is your location. Now, if someone else had a different uh, coordinate system, they may have a different position, but that's fine. We don't have to agree on the position. Next, imagine that I take this and I move over here. And uh, so this will call x1 and we'll call that x2. And I want to describe the motion. I could say that this is the displacement. And we use delta x, and that's going to be x2 minus x1. It's the change in position. Now, if you had someone with a different coordinate system, maybe this is the origin right here, they're going to have the same displacement, even though they have different uh, coordinate systems, and that's fine. Um, okay, so now let's say that I go from x1 to x2 in a time interval delta t equals 1 second. Well, in that case, I can define the average velocity in one dimension. We'll get into two dimensions later. So I'm writing this as a scalar as delta x over delta t. It's the rate of change of position. And um, so that's going to be x2 minus x1 over delta t. So it's going to be 4 minus 2 meters over 1 second to meters per second. Now you may have seen something like this before in calculus uh, and that's true, right? If I take the limit as delta t goes to zero, uh, then I, this actually becomes a derivative and we call that the instantaneous velocity. And it's going to be the derivative of x with respect to time. If you have a constant velocity or yeah, or a constant rate of change in velocity, it doesn't matter which one you use. Okay, so then let's get to uh, changes in velocity. So here we define the average acceleration. It's going to be the rate of change of velocity. Uh, so that's going to be equal to V2 minus V1 over delta T. And again, if I let the, the limit delta t goes to zero, I get the instantaneous acceleration, which is the derivative dv dt, the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Okay, now there's two special definitions that we need to look at, um, and I'll just use a new piece of paper. And the first is speed. Speed versus velocity, this comes up. So velocity, let's say uh, velocity, average velocity, is delta x over delta t. So if I go back to my, uh, my number line, here I have 0, and let's say I start here at x1 and I finish right here at x2, um, then I can calculate the average velocity. But what if I went like this? So I went all the way back and then forward. Well, average velocity doesn't care. Average velocity just depends on where you started, where you ended up. That's that. Okay. Um, but the speed, and there's more than one definition of this, speed is the distance traveled over the time interval. Okay. 
So that would include all this distance and all that distance. So these two would give you different numbers. Now, it's not, um, I don't think it's great. Some people will write, oh, the well, speed is just the absolute value of the average velocity. And that's not actually true. I mean, you could use it in some cases, but that's fine. Um, what I would, let me tell you the one thing I would never do. V, D over T. I'm sorry, that's not even a T. V equals D over T or X over T. This is bad. Be very careful. I see a lot of people doing this. Um, this assumes that it starts at X equals zero at time T equals zero, which is not always the case. It doesn't show that it's a rate of change. It's just, it just gets you into a lot of problems. I would recommend not doing that. Okay, so now let's get to the kinematic equations. Kinematic, kin, kinematic. So this is a way to get relationships between position, velocity, and time. Uh, and let's just start with the average velocity. V average, and this is only true for A equals constant. I'm having a problem spelling right now. A equals constant. This is only true. So the average velocity is going to be delta x over delta t. So if I consider this as x2 minus x1 over delta t, uh, then I can solve this for x2. I can multiply both sides by delta t, add x1. I get x2 equals x1 plus v average delta t. Not v, v average. Now I can also say the other definition, V average, is, did I write this down before? No, I didn't. So if the, if the acceleration is constant, then the average velocity is V1 plus V2 over 2. It's literally just an average. So if I put that in over here, I get X2 equals X1 plus, I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out into terms V1 delta t over 2 plus v2 delta t over 2. <clears throat> now what I want to do is get an expression for v2. So let's use the definition of acceleration as delta v over delta t. I don't have to say average because it's constant. So this is v2 minus v1 over delta t. And if I solve this for v2, I get v2 I can multiply it by delta t. I get a delta t, add v1, v1 plus a delta t. Now if I substitute that in up here, I get this becomes x2 equals x1 plus v1 delta t over 2 plus, now I have two terms. I have v1 over 2 delta t plus 1 half a delta t squared. And if I add these two terms together, uh, this is an important equation right there. That's one of the kinematic equations. If I add these two terms, I have v1 delta t over 2, v1 delta t, t over 2. They add up to just v1 delta t, and I get x2 equals x1 plus v1 delta t plus 1 half a delta t squared. And that's the next kinematic equation. So now I have two. There's a whole bunch of these, but really, these are the two most important ones, um, if you ask me. Uh, so finally, we, we want to get an equation, one more equation um, that doesn't have time in it, because this one has time and this one has time. Is there any way to get one without time? Well, let's write, let's go back up to this equation right here. So x2 equals x1 plus V average, which is going to be uh, V1 plus V2 over 2 delta T. And I also had the other equation, V2 equals V1 plus A delta T. So let's solve this for delta T and substitute it in over here. So if I do that, I get V2 minus V1 uh, over A equals delta T. 
Now I'm going to substitute this in over here. Uh, I'm going to su subtract x1 from both sides. So I get x2 minus x1 equals um, v1 plus v2 over 2. And then delta t is going to be v2 minus v1 over a. So I have a 2a over here. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2a. So I get 2a x2 minus x1 equals v1 plus v2 times v2 minus v1. And you'll notice that this is, if I square this out, since I have a, a plus b times a minus b, I get, um, I should write this as v2 plus v1. I get this squared, v2 squared. I get minus v1 squared. And then I get the cross term. I get two cross terms. I get uh, v2 times negative v1 and v1 times v2, and they cancel, so that's that. And if I solve this for v2, I get v2 squared equals v1 squared plus 2a x2 minus x1. And that's your third kinematic equation. Um, yeah, th those are really the only ones you need. The book gives a couple more, but they're just algebraic solutions of the other ones. Okay, let's do uh, the calculus version of the kinematic equations. So let's start with uh, A equals some constant. And we're just going to call it A. So I can write that as A equals dv dt. It's the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. Now, if I multiply both sides by delta t, I get dv equals a dt. And this is one of those things, if you haven't done a lot of calculus and physics, you can do this, right? These are just differentially small quantities. It's fine. You can do that. Uh, but now I have a differential right here and a differential over there. I can actually integrate both sides of the equation. I can say I'm going to integrate both sides, and the integral of dv, it's just v. So this is going to be v. And the integral of this side is going to be uh, a t. But I have to add a constant, right? Because I didn't do a, a, a definite uh, integral. So now I need to find that constant. So I'm going to say uh, the velocity at t equals 0 is equal to v0. So if I put in t is equal to 0, I get v0 equals a times 0 plus c. And so that means c equals v0. So now I can write this as v as a function of time equals v0 plus a t. That's essentially what we had before. This assumes that this is uh, the velocity at when t is equal to 0. Now I can use this as the definition of velocity as the derivative of the position with respect to time. So I can say v0 plus a t is dx dt. And again, I can multiply by delta t, I mean dt, and I get dx equals uh, v0 plus a t dt. And again, integrate both sides. So if I integrate this side, I get x. And if I integrate this side, I have v0 dt, so it's going to be v0 t. And then I have plus uh, a t dt is going to be 1 half a t squared. And then I have another constant. I'll call that uh, k. So I can find that constant by saying uh, x at time t equals 0 is x0. So if I put in t equals 0, I get x0 uh, equals 0, 0 x0. That's x. Sorry. x x is a function of 0 is equal to x0. No, I'm sorry. x0 is that and that's going to be k. So x0 is equal to k. So if I put that in, I get x is a function of t is equal to uh, x0 plus v0t plus 1 half a t squared. Again, only for constant acceleration. Now, I can use that same trick 
to get the other kinematic equation um, since it only it just use it solves the same thing so you get the same thing with the v zero squared but that's that um, and I think that's good enough for uh, one dimensional motion hope you enjoyed that the playlist for the rest of the stuff will be down below if you made it this far.